Hello, George Romanich here. Today we have a very simple problem in which we need to investigate the importance of the Coriolis force in a tornado. The text of the problem is now on your screens. So the tornado in question is an EF0, an actually weak EF0 tornado, Characteristic velocity is only 30 meters per second. Tornado is at the latitude of 20 degrees and diameter of this twister is 100 meters. Does the Coriolis force matter? What does that even mean? Well, that means if we want to investigate dynamics of this tornado or kinematics flow field, we want to do modeling, do we need to account for the Coriolis force? How do we approach questions like this? Well, we use the concept of the Rosby number. That's the plan. Simple plan. <laughs> now, from my previous videos, I hope you know that a Rosby number is defined as u over fl, where u is characteristic velocity in a given phenomena, l is characteristic length, and f is Coriolis parameter defined as 2 omega sine phi, where omega is angular velocity of the Earth, 7.3 times 10 to power negative 5, second minus 1. And phi is latitude, which in this case is positive number because it's northern hemisphere. All these are of course explained separately in my previous videos. So if you calculate this, I believe you will get that this is approximately 5 times 10 to power negative 5 second minus 1. So that's the Coriolis parameter or Coriolis frequency. Characteristic length of this tornado is diameter 100 meters and characteristic velocity is 30 meters per second. So before we plug in numbers, what do we need to know? Well, we need to know that Rosby number represents the ratio of the Coriolis force and, uh, or of inertial forces and the Coriolis force. If the Rosby number is very, very large, then the uh, inertial forces dominate the flow field and Coriolis force is not so important. If the Rosby number is order of magnitude of 1, or around 1, then the Coriolis force is equally important, of equal strength, as the inertial forces. And if the Rosby number is below 1, which can happen often in oceanography, then Coriolis force is even more dominant than the inertial forces. So when we get result, Judging on the value of this number, we can answer this question, does the rotation of the Earth matter? So, this is equal, u is 30 meters per second, f is 5 times 10 to power negative 5, second minus 1, everything is, is in SI units, so I don't put units over there, and times characteristic length is 100 meters. Now, I believe if you calculate this over here, you will get a value that is approximately 6,000. And 6,000 in my books is much larger than 1, which means that the Coriolis force is completely not important in this tornado. So to answer this question, the answer is no. Coriolis force does not play important role in the dynamics and kinematics of the flow field in this weak EF0 tornado. Now part B, that was part A. Part B of this problem says what would have to be velocity in this tornado so that the Coriolis force matters. Well, we can solve part B here. 
So we just go back to the definition of the Rossby number. We can say if the Rossby number is order of magnitude 1, that means that the Coriolis force is equally important as the inertial forces. And now, taking this order of magnitude value, we can find u that satisfies that value over here. So, namely, if we say that 1, and that's Rossby number, is equal unknown u divided by known f and l, and f is approximately 5 times 10 to power negative 5, and uh, L is 100. From here, it follows, if you calculate this, that U needs to be around 5 millimeters per second. So you can see that the velocity in this vortex would have to be around, because this is order of magnitude, around one millimeter to five millimeters per second for the Coriolis force to be equally important as the inertial forces. Or, in a different uh, words, we could say that this is the value of the velocity that needs to be in this vortex so that the rotation of the Earth plays important role in the dynamics of this tornado. Clearly, this is extremely weak velocity, 5 millimeters per second. That's a velocity we cannot even detect with our body. You cannot detect velocity of 5 millimeters per second. And therefore, clearly, this wouldn't even be tornado. It would be just some weak vortex with this velocity that would be undetectable by uh, uh, by our uh, senses, except if we put some instruments over there. At any rate, what is important is for you to understand how to tackle these types of questions. If the question says, does the Coriolis force matter in some natural phenomena, then your first approach to solve that question should be to use Rossby number. If the Rossby number is very large, Coriolis force doesn't matter. If it is around 1 or below, then it does matter, and you have to account for it. Until next video, goodbye.